94.3 Radio 1, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you get the nicest music to listen to. And uh, of course, um, uh, there's also the videos that you see. And um, uh, what you are seeing here, of course, is the wonderful Rika, uh, whose um, new song will definitely get your feet to tap if you're dancing. At least make sure that you wiggle your toes. That'll be dancing as well. It's called Payroll. It uh, features Cranium. And uh, uh, more importantly, Rika is actually uh, the first hire for, um, uh, for Warner Music India. So a pioneer in her own sense. Rika, thank you very much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us right here on 94.3 Radio 1. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's an honor to be here. Um, tell us, uh, payroll, it's got uh, reggae influences. It's got, uh, uh, it's got cranium in it and uh, it's got a beat that's infectious. Uh, tell us the story. How did, uh, how did all that happen? So I wrote the song here in the UK and um, I was God, just scrolling on for a while and I was just scrolling on Instagram and I came across Cranium's Instagram and I saw he was doing an interview and he's a very funny guy. I met him and he's super, super funny and just very humble. I love the work he's done and I had to get him on the record. So I sent him the song. He absolutely loved it. He jumped on it. and. That's how uh, payroll came to be. You've also had a pretty uh, uh, eclectic upbringing as far as your exposure to music is concerned. I mean, uh, Serbian mother, Indian father, uh, exposure to Indian classical music as well, and Mariah Carey hitting those high notes. You, uh, you of course, uh, in a few interviews, you've also said that Mariah Carey happens to be a big influence. So, so what was that like? What was your uh, your playlist that you were grooving to in the years when the hormones were hitting the head? Um, so I, growing up next to my uncles and aunties, I used to um, listen to a lot of old school Bollywood music. When I come over to their house, they make some dal, some roti, and uh, we just eat and I just uh, be listening to this music in the background. And I actually grew up listening to a plethora of music. Um, I love a lot of the 70s, the 80s, like the Carpenters, ABBA, Lionel Richie. Um, and obviously a lot of pop music growing up, especially as a teenager, um, like Carly Rae Jepsen, Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey is a big influence on me as well with my songwriting. Um, so I feel like with the infusion of everything put together and especially my background and um, all the cultures which I was surrounded with growing up, I just um, this came to be um, how I sound today and how I make my music. And what lovely music it is, uh, we must add. <laughs> um, you also, of course, uh, you know, the pandemic has uh, has had a huge influence on the art community. Uh, there are people who sort of rediscovered their mojo. There are people who uh, rethought their direction, etc. Um, you started making music just before that. Uh, how was the pandemic for you? What, what did it do to the to the process of music making? Making music, I was very used to just, um, usually I go into a studio and I have a writer and another producer with me and we'd all collaborate, uh, you know, face to face. And when the pandemic hit, that all just came to a halt. So if I wanted to make music, I'd have to do it over Zoom, like you and I are talking right now. Um, and that was, honestly, is it's different. It has its pros and cons. It's quite isolating in the fact that you don't have that communication and that connection with the other person but it also forces you to make that connection with yourself and to really see yourself as not just a body but as like your own friend you know what i mean so just to really d dive in and dig deeper and i feel like in that time i've created the most personal and mature music I what I've made so far and I've, I'm really proud of the pieces that I've created especially uh, payroll being one of them and just it's yeah just creating music it is it was really it was really interesting I'd say during that time and I've uh, now created my own home studio luckily where I have I took a little part of my cupboard and I put a but microphone in there so I can have a little makeshift recording studio um, and it's been really nice recording my own vocals and you know just becoming the master of the te technological part of recording. So, yeah. You know, I come from a time where most of my music was actually also heard um, in a community. We would go out, we'd have concerts, we'd be jumping around in open fields, and uh, and during the pandemic, I could, I could, you know, um, 
very keenly feel the difference between the way we consume music before and the way we consume music during and after the, you know it's it's become a more intimate experience isn't it a uh, music is a more you and me thing rather than an us thing right now um have you uh, is your uh, uh, musical grounding also uh, based on going to open air concerts watching them and and what would you rather be doing making music at home or would you rather be playing in front of an audience i mean is there a definition for you there somewhere a distinction between that i feel like especially because of the pandemic it's made that longing for you know going to festivals and concerts uh it's made people realize like oh my gosh this is such a big part of of you know who i am like going to a concert seeing your favorite artist connecting with the music in a completely different way and since everything's eased it's been um so much more appreciation towards artists and music and live music and i think it's been amazing the comeback of live music and the music by myself and then performing it to crowds is like they're both so um what's the word they're both so gratifying in their own different ways and um i love both sides of the process just as much i can't really pick a favorite you know they're like my, both my children so i can <laughs> Yes of course the uh, what's on your what's on your playlist right now what are you uh, listening to on loop well payroll obviously i'm listening to payroll um <laughs> um but that's actually very interesting because uh, you know i saw this fantastic interview with the, the great Ozzy Osbourne who was asked if he knew who Justin Bieber was and yeah. uh, he said he had no clue and he used quite colorful language for that as well <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, then he was told who Justin Bieber was and uh, he was asked why he didn't listen so he had a very interesting answer he says i don't usually when i'm making music i don't usually listen to others because i fear that what goes in from here pointing to his ear he says might come out from here pointing to his mouth you know so so um uh, do you uh, uh, what role do influences in music play in your music i actually um feel completely different i feel like the more music you listen to the more you can kind of sift down like like you take a bunch of flour right and you put it in a sift and you can then take out what you what, like you can absorb what works for you or what you connect to if you don't open your mind to all the different things out there all the different genres all the different ways people song right you can't figure out what works best for you if you don't know what's out there so i feel like just listening to a bunch of music and really you know opening your mind sonically is a better way to approach songwriting and making music because the more you know the more you know knowledgeable you are for sure uh, uh, also was there was there that one defining moment when you were listening to a song or you were watching a video and you said that this is what makes me want to be a musician was there a defining moment like that i think my um first love for music actually came from performing. I used to do a lot of musical theater as a child. So, um I used to do all the school plays and people always used to tell me, "Oh, be careful of stay stage fright, like, you know, the lights hit you and you everyone freezes apparently on stage." And so I got on stage. Um and I was like 13 years old. I was playing um uh I was playing Nala in The Lion King, right? And I got on stage and I I never felt more at home, more centered than I did when I was on stage. So I knew my home was on stage. I just didn't know exactly what the decorations of my house were. I didn't know if I wanted to be a theater person or if I wanted to do music. And slowly slowly as I got older, I realized I have a lot of love and passion for songwriting. I've always dabbled in songwriting. When I was 9, I wrote my first song. Um it was very bad, but I wrote one. <laughs> so um I've always kept it more songwriting is like a journaling tool um rather than like I want to show people my music when I was, you know, 13, 14. And then when I became 16, 17, I realized yeah, actually I love music, I love writing it, I love performing it, uh my own pieces. So I think that's how I um became like like was like yeah, this is this is my path. Like this right here is my 
excellent uh, there was also um, you know I, i was also talking to a bunch of very seasoned musicians and they said something very very interesting which hit me very hard which was that they come from a time which was the turn of the century and they said at that point of time music used to be a push medium where um, you know there were only a few ways that you could push your music out it was either a magazine or it was mtv or it was radio and now because they come out with a new album that's what we were talking about and they said that now it's become a pull medium because with the internet and the opening of the internet it's become so much more important to try and pull people into your music because they've got so many choices you know and they said that uh, to us the internet is also a little bit of a, a bit intimidating because we are adapting to it you know so um you know uh, about the marketing of your music about about it cutting through the clutter so to speak what are your views about that I feel like music the one thing in media changes internet is new um social media will keep popping up arising and there will always be new formats to push music um but I feel like the one thing which is consistent throughout is the music that you make the music hasn't changed it's just the way people are discovering it has changed there's now streaming services there's now Instagram TikTok you know reels um all sorts of apps and stuff but the music is still the same it's not changing so i feel like as long as the music still is authentic and still has its own um you know like fingerprint you know you don't want to make something which is already which isn't you as long as that is that is what cuts through i feel like in my opinion you can make all sorts of challenges and stuff but i feel like the music is has its own voice and that is what connects with the people You know Mike Shinoda from uh, from Linkin Park had uh, ha- had uh, made this uh, Twitter post which uh, went a little viral. He said that you know uh, I see a lot of uh, musicians being under pressure to constantly produce what is called content and uh, you know uh, in trying to do that uh, they're probably missing out on making a song. The last line actually was was very hard hitting. He said that uh, you know in the constant race to provide uh, 10 second content uh, they might be missing out on writing the best song that they never wrote you know yeah. uh, do you do you feel pressured in that way uh, uh, by the by the constancy of the of social media because you know every 5 seconds things are changing um uh, do you feel pressured like that ever as far as marketing music is concerned i feel like as long as i'm just keeping it like how i would do things and you know i'm not doing something i feel is inauthentic to myself um obviously the pressure is always there to do your best and to you know reach as many people as you can and try your hardest um and i feel like just the definition of that has changed so what may, it may have been before is now making content and trying to push your music it's just a different way of doing it instead of like 8 hours of radio interviews and tv and stuff like that it's just 8 hours of making content i feel like so i think just the format has changed but as long as you're keeping it you know you're like how you would do things and always keeping a check on yourself like you know maybe this is a bit much like taking a step back taking a break is always always okay and always the best thing to do because once you have that rest you feel rejuvenated and ready to go again you know yes absolutely that's that that's great advice and finally um what advice would you give uh, those who have been seduced by dame music and want to make music a career <laughs> um i would just say don't be afraid to make mistakes because everyone like i saw Ed Sheeran he was talking about um how he turned on the tap and when he started songwriting he turned on the tap and it was just a bunch of like gunky water coming out but after writing and writing and writing the water started to become clearer and the song started to become better and then he started to become a better songwriter and i just feel like you keep trying and you keep sifting through what you like what you don't like and you will round out as a person you just need to keep polishing your, the ball which is your artistry that's that's brilliantly put actually keep polishing the ball that seems uh, like pretty sane advice um quick rapid fire um uh one one year verb that you hate but you still say <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> um i would say um about that time by about damn time by lizzo it's everywhere it's everywhere all the time and it's always in my head all the time it's a lovely I love it song though <laughs> i love that i love it It's just always there. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, the worst part about being a musician? Late nights. 
you know, I woke up at 5, 5 a.m. today and I, I went to sleep at one. I was doing all the stuff because the song's coming out um, today. It came out today, uh, the 5th of August. And I'm not sure. I don't know if I was meant to say that because I don't know if it's pre-recorded. So anyway, so the song's coming out, right? So I'd stay up and do all the mumble jumble for making the song, making sure it comes out cool, you know, coordinating with here, everyone. Blah, blah. And then I have to wake up at 5 a.m. so I can post a video and I can make sure that everything's in line and, you know, the song's coming out and it's like, ah, like, I think just not sleeping. I miss <laughs> sleep. I love sleep. I will sleep 10 hours very easily. I miss her. Can she that come passion, back? That passion for music and that passion for sleep is coming right through Riga. It's fantastic. They're like uh, polar opposites. If you love music you, and you love sleep, they'll they'll never go together, ever. So. Another bit of sane advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> your your strategy when you forget lyrics on stage. Point the mic to the crowd. They'll know it. If you're at your own show, you know, yeah, and they got it. They got the lyrics. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, remedy for cold feet before going on stage. Um, just remember that they're there to, to see you, and they're there to cheer yourself cheer yourself they're there to cheer you on they're there to listen to you and that they love you like even if even if you're not like you know if you're super nervous and stuff they're they, they're not nervous so just pretend you're them just pretend you're in the crowd listening to yourself and one song that one song that you wish you have you would want to sing oh my god um i wish i sang every woman by Whitney houston that's such an iconic song it's it's I, a beautiful song. It's amazing. I want to sing it. <laughs> I wish I wrote it. <laughs> I love it. I am everyone. You wanna you wanna sing us a little, a couple of lights? Oh my gosh! You put me on the spot. You put me on the spot. You put me on the spot. <clears throat> I just woke up, so a little voice box, a little. <clears throat> hmm. I'm every woman. It's all in me. I can read your thoughts right now. From LA to say, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, finally, can we also get uh, a little bit of payroll uh, live for us? Of course, of course, of course, of course. You keep working overtime, spending all them dollars on me. Yeah. I told you a million times, you can get it all for free. Do, 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 do. You bought me Gucci. Don't even suit me. You ain't gotta break the bank to keep me around. It ain't your money that's getting you lucky. I just need somebody who can hold me down. That's Rika, ladies and gentlemen. Her song's called uh, Payroll featuring Cranium. And you might want to play it with the volumes on the Are You Crazy level so that the feet feel it a little more. That's important, isn't it? Rika, it's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much for your time and all the very best for what we are sure is going to be a blockbuster song. <laughs>